investors out there. Uh, Earl Davis is head of fixed income and money markets at BMO, Glass, BMO uh, Global Asset Management. And Earl, um, you know, I know you've said this isn't time to bail on fixed income. Uh, and we, we've been talking about the fact that whatever's happening in treasuries doesn't yet seem to be touching the corporate bond market. It's been a little bit immune to those uh, rising yields. What did you hear today that changes, if anything, or confirms your view of the investing landscape? I would say uh, it actually it confirms our view of the investing landscape uh, and what we spoke about earlier in regards to reducing duration, investing in the two to five year sector of the bond market and, um, and less so in the longer duration sector where it's a lot more volatile. Uh, like we spoke about earlier, uh, uh, Governor Powell reiterated that the Fed has your back. Uh, for the next two years. I and mean, that's why we like the shorter duration area of, of the yield curve. And we've seen violent curve steepening today with uh, two to five year bonds rallying about five basis points and uh, 10 to 30 year bonds selling off about five basis points. And what that's telling us, and I think um, Governor Powell said a number of times today, they're going to be intentional about being behind the curve. You know, changing monetary policy has a lag period. Uh, changing tapering has a lag period. But what he said is that we're not going to base our moves or our hikes on forecasted uh, interest rates and forecasted employment. We're going to base it not only on actual and not only substantial actual, but sustained. So that to me is telling us, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be intentional about being behind the curve, which bodes for a lot more steepening. Despite the steepening we've seen this year, I can see it doubling. So then let's just talk about the ability of the central bank. And they have now a lot of tools at their disposal. We're just talking about, uh, you know, the leverage ratios. There are a lot of different tools at their disposal to try to change conditions and change behaviors. But Earl, does it strike any kind of note of alarm for you, for those of us, and maybe you're not old enough to remember inflation, uh, those of us who are old enough to remember it, uh, to, to, to see a Federal Reserve saying we want to wait for it to be in the economy? Uh, because to me, that says it may be too late, right? Everybody thinks they can control it. But once it's taken hold, is, is it really, does the Fed have the power that it thinks it has? Uh, without a doubt, it has the power. Uh, when people say it's not too late, it's not that it's too late to uh, stop inflation. Uh, the U.S. stopped inflation at 18% in, in uh, 1980, but how they do it is just a lot more hikes and a lot quicker than the market anticipates. So the, the Fed definitely has the tool, and that's why we think we'll see further steepening. You know, the market's going to say, oh, this, the hikes that they're going to have to do after 2023 are not just going to be 25 basis points a move. They might be 50, 75, even 100. Who knows, right? But uh, I think that'll be reflected hmm. in continued curve steepening. And you're protected until 2023. He is very adamant about that, and I, I, I believe him. So, uh, yeah, obviously, we're going to, as you say, we are going to see potentially more steepening. Uh, does that mean, when you think about kind of your the bets that you would place on the duration, do you expect to stay short for a long time? Does that kind of change your long-term outlook for what you think about fixed income? It, it's funny. We just had our forecasts uh, with our team, and uh, it looks like we'll be adding to steepeners. Um, uh, we do like the short end, like I said, in the mortgage and short term uh, program, like uh, the pickup and carry in regards to uh, two year bonds is great. Uh, so we like that. One thing to note, though, Amanda, is that um, nothing's for certain, as, as uh, Governor Powell said. Uh, there's not only the variance that could be a possibility, which may bode well for buying 10-year bonds if we back up another 25 or 30 basis points around the 2% level. There's geopolitical risks out there. There's still a lot of stuff. You know, fixed income, especially on the longer end, is an insurance policy, an insurance for risk off. And it's not like we're just all in and risk on mode. So you still have to keep that in the back of the